Yo guys, Ponchi here, and today we're gonna learn how to use the envelope on our Mo Grandmother synth. Let's go. All right, so what is the envelope on the Mo Grandmother, or any synth for that matter? Well, basically it uses voltage, it changes the voltage to change the volume of the sound over time. That's all an envelope is, is it changes the sound over time in terms of volume. In other instances, you can use an envelope to adjust the filter over time, but we're not gonna talk about that today. Maybe in a future video if you guys want. But basically this envelope is what they refer to as an ADSR envelope. So what that stands for is attack decay, sustain, and release. So let's go through each one individually. So the attack basically determines the amount of time for the signal to get to its peak. First off, if you're not getting any sound through your grandmother specifically, probably part of the reason is that your envelope is not set correctly. So let's create an initialized envelope so we have something to work with in this video. So you want your attack, decay, and release to all be at zero or seven o'clock, however you wanna look at it. And then you want your sustain to be up all the way. So when you do that, you have this type of sound. It's a very quick kind of sound. As soon as you press the key down, you hear the note. As soon as you release the key, you don't hear the note anymore. So that's what happens when you have the envelope set this way. So again, back to the attack, that controls how quickly it takes to get to its peak. So if you have no attack, or if you're attacked at zero, or seven o'clock, however you want to look at it, the note arrives at its peak volume pretty much instantly. That's how you use attack. So if you wanted to create a sound where it kind of faded in, like something in terms of like a pad, you would want your attack to be a little higher. So let's set the attack to 12 o'clock and then let's hear what happens when you hold the note down. Because the attack is at 12 o'clock, it takes a little while to get up to its peak volume. Let's put that back down to zero. The decay, that basically determines how long it takes for the signal to fall from the peak and go to the sustain level. Because we have the sustain all the way and the decay is all the way down, you're essentially kind of skipping over the delay and it goes straight from the peak and then stays at the peak because of the sustain. The decay and the sustain actually are, are pretty related in the sense that they certainly affect each other. Even if we change the decay, you won't hear a difference with that because of where the sustain is. The sustain is all the way up, regardless of how you set the decay, it's already at its peak level because of the sustain. If we set the sustain in the middle and change the decay, it's gonna go to its peak instantly because of the attack, and then it's gonna decay, it's gonna take some time to decay down to where the sustain level is. So you can hear when you hold the note, it's essentially it's instantly going up to its peak volume, and then because of the decay, 
at 12 o'clock, it's taking a little bit of time to come down to where the sustain level is set. That's how the decay and the sustain are related to each other. Let's go back to where we were initially, keep the decay all the way down and the sustain all the way up. And now we have release. What the release does is, if you look at it, these things go in order. The attack is the first one. It takes the volume up. The decay takes the volume down to where the sustain level is. And so the release is the final one in the chain, you could say. Whereas the release determines how long it takes to go from the sustain level all the way back down to zero. If you have your release set to zero like we do, which is otherwise known as a quick release, it's so quick, in fact, that as soon as you take your finger off of the note, it just lowers instantly to zero volume. If we add a, a bit of release, let's take it to 12 o'clock, then what we can do is we can, as soon as we take our finger off, because we have the release at 12 o'clock, it's going to take some time to get from the sustain level all the way back down to zero. Watch what happens when I hit the note and I take my finger off. See how once you take your finger off, it takes some time to get back down to zero volume. If you put it at maximum, see what happens. So when you have maximum release, it takes a really long time to get back down to zero volume. If you combine that with some attack, let's put the attack at, uh, at 12 o'clock, maximum release. What will happen here is when I hit the note, because of the attack at 12 o'clock, it will take some time to climb up. And then once I release the key, it'll take a really long time for it to go back down to zero volume. So let's hear what it sounds like. Because of the sustain and the decay where they are, if I just hold the note, it'll sound like that indefinitely. But once I release it, Because of the release being at maximum, it takes a while for the note to come back down to zero volume. Hope that helps you guys. That was kind of just a quick rundown of what you can do. Obviously today I'm not talking about the uh, modular options. I'm just talking about the envelope as it is pre-wired within the grandmother. But of course, like I mentioned, um, there's a way to use the envelope with the filter cutoff. If you have any other synths, you might be familiar with, you might have two envelopes. So anyway, if you guys want me to do a video on uh, using it with the filter, let me know down below. Feel free to leave a comment with any questions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.